Selena Mikowajczak is the Chief Technology Officer for the battery company Lighten. Well, for the battery division of Lighten. Oh. So, as a company, we do um, graphene materials and their products, right? So, we use some of them in composites, we use some of them in some military applications, we use some of them in sensors, and we use some of them in lithium sulfur batteries. So, I run the lithium sulfur battery side of the business. Got it. Okay, thanks yeah. for the clarification. Mm -hmm. I first ran into you guys about four or five years ago, mm -hmm. and I was wowed. I'd never heard of lithium sulfur batteries before, and the promise looks brilliant. Yep. Here we are four or five years later, where mm -hmm. do we stand now? Well, we're a lot closer to that promise. Um, so we've started shipping cells to customers, A samples, right? They're, they're um, you know, they are legitimate cells. They really work. They are, you know, a decent form factor. Um, People can use them and test them and uh, get them on their roadmaps. Um, you know, they're not ready for automotive, automotive prime time yet, but they are ready to be on people's roadmaps, right? So now, now there's a cell, it's an A sample, they can be on a roadmap for a large automaker, get used to looking at lithium sulfur, working with it, thinking about how to, how to implement it. Um, and we're seeing, you know, some really accelerated technology development because we've put together really a critical mass of people in the R&D and manufacturing teams. So suddenly, you know, our performance improvements are just kind of growing substantially faster and faster, right? So it's exciting times. So I'm going to show my ignorance. I'm not at all a battery uh -huh. engineer, but okay. my understanding with uh, lithium sulfur is, and I don't know if this is the right word, they're fragile. They can only take so many cycles and then they start to break down. Oh yeah, so lithium sulfur, like, you know, all this promise in the chemistry, right? Everyone's known this forever. And then they tried to make them, right? And then they couldn't get any cycle life out of them. Um, that's, that's really what we've been changing, right? So um, our materials that we make, the graphene material we make, that's the kind of the, the structural backbone for the sulfur, it's really good at holding on to sulfur. So that's the game changer, that's is using changer. graphene. Yeah, yeah. so the, the game changer is you've got, you've got to have your cathode material under control. You've got to have the right material holding onto that sulfur. We happen to make that material. That's what got us into it. So that was the, that's the enabling thing. After that, you have to deal with all the rest of the battery packs. So this is like step one. You know, now you have to deal with the anode, which is lithium metal. We're doing a ton of development on that. We've got a lot of 3D anodes. Right, so the folks I was just talking to, they're like, maybe we could talk about those components too. Because <laughs> our 3D anodes are really interesting to a lot of people, right? Um, I think they're gonna work best in lithium sulfur cells. I think other people might find them interesting for other chemistries, but I think they're really gonna make lithium sulfur cells work wonderfully. You have to then develop the electrolyte that, that works with all of this, that works on the anode and the cathode side. So you do formulations of that. And then you have to design the cell and actually produce the sell in you know high volumes and and uh, uh, at a reasonable price right so um, we're doing all of that right but the the carbon was the starting point yeah and I, I gotta believe mass production is one of the real big challenges yeah so one of the things that I really you know saw with these this chemistry one of the reasons I went to light is they, they could make like actual cells right this was not a chemistry that required you to rethink the entire manufacturing process. So I looked at this and I went, okay, now that's, that's got legs. That could win, right? Um, and since then, since I joined Lighten, you know, it's proved to be true. And it's also something that we take as a, as a key part of our development. So, you know, anything that we try in our cells, we have to be able to put it on our standard, you know, pilot line, which is standard lithium ion equipment, it has to work on that line. We can't be, you know, doing something that's super slow or super unique or requires a whole new manufacturing process to do. We have to, like, be using standard manufacturing processes. And the same thing, like, the materials themselves. You know, you can't be putting platinum into a cell, right? Not You'll if never you want to take the cost it. out. No, right, not yeah. if you want to do the cost. So my guys will come to me with some additive that they want to add or something, and I'll be like, how expensive is that? And they're like, no, no, it's fine. <laughs> really, this is, you know, available domestically. Its cost is reasonable. And I'm like, okay, right? Because otherwise, it's just not a, it's not a thing. You can't, if you can't make something in high volume, no one's going to buy it.
What kind of form factors can you make these batteries in? So we can make any form factor people want. Mm -hmm. I can make pouch cells, which I do a lot of, really nice for some of the really ultra lightweight demand that we have. I can make cylindrical cells. I've made the 18650s that were the originals in the Model S. We can do that. We have a lot of customers who are devoted to that particular form factor. We can take the more modern 2170 form factor that's a slightly bigger cell. That's what people typically are using now in micromobility for like the e-bikes and scooters. It's also what, you know, Rivian is putting in their trucks and Lucid is using and uh, um, some of the other Tesla derivatives. People, you know, started companies to follow Tesla's path. A lot of 2170s in cars. Mm -hmm. um, that's what's in my Model Y, okay? Um, people are asking me about the larger form factor. 4860? 48, yeah. 4680s, 46XX, which could be taller. Um, we could do it. It would be a good form factor. I don't do it right now because I got a pretty modest pilot line and I would need a much bigger winder, but we could do it. Um, people ask me about prismatics. Again, we could do it. Um, I don't have it on a pilot line right now, but if someone wanted, I could do it. What are the holdups to getting this to mass production for automotive? So, <clears throat> um, I've got some t technology development ahead of me because my cycle life isn't where the automotive world wants it yet. We'll get there, but you know, I got a couple years on that. Um, I've got a ramp a supply chain. Now, it's a simple supply chain. I've got sulfur and I've got our graphene, right, which is carbon-based. That's not that bad. I need lithium metal. That's challenging, but doable. And then I need to scale up, you know, electrolyte suppliers, right? Somewhat new chemicals, so that's a scale-up problem. Um, I've got separator, that's standard lithium-ion separator, so that one's straightforward, but I got to, you know, still build a supply chain, right? Um, so I got a technology roadmap, I got a supply chain roadmap, then I got to have a manufacturing roadmap, I've got to be able to get to scale, right? So I got to build a big factory. All of this comes down to, it's a money problem, okay? <laughs> In the end, it's all about money. Mm -hmm. I have the critical mass of researchers, they're doing tr tremendous work. Um, I have the tools for doing research. I've got the pilot line to try what we got out of research. So all that's great, but Big factories cost lots of money, so that's uh, that's really, you know, that's really the thing. But you must have a glide path to where you're going to get to mass production. Oh yes. This decade, what do oh, you yeah. think? Oh really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So we're looking to expand to bigger production facilities in the next year. Just, you know, we're at like two megawatt hours right now, like max, max. Right, we want to get to 100 megawatt hours in the next year plus. And then we've got In the a, next year? Yeah. That's a big jump. It is a jump. We think we can do it. It'll be hard, but we can do it. Mm -hmm. um, but then uh, we want to get to gigawatt hour facility. We're already doing planning for that. We've got tool equipment makers working with us to do larger scale production, you know, and um, testing whether they can produce our cells, you know, with this mass production equipment. Um, so we've got uh, that work ongoing already. So we're looking at 2027 for our first six to seven gigawatt hours. That's not automotive scale. That's like everyone else's scale, right? <laughs> I could supply, you know, last mile delivery vehicles, the military, satellite guys, eVTOL guys, and like micro mobility out as that kind of a factory, right? That's, the, that's a relevant scale for that. Um, for automotive, you need like 20 minimum, more like 50. That's the next step after that, but that's still possible within the decade. Wow. Yeah, it's fascinating. Shocking. Oh, that, that, that's good stuff. Yeah, it is good stuff. I mean, we can do it because we're using standard lithium ion making equipment. So, you know, we can build our own first six to seven gigawatt hour factory from scratch, but after we prove it out, we could take over other people's like mothballed factories convert them. Ooh, interesting. Right. That's how you get to scale Because we're seeing some battery fasters. companies closing down, right? Northvolt is in the news right now, so. Yeah. There's, let's just say there's a lot of stranded assets out there right stranded now. Stranded assets that could probably be bought for pennies on the dollar. We hope so. So or what's the plan? Will Lighten make its own, or would you license it? Um, it's a new chemistry. I, 
you have to really be committed to a new chemistry to make it happen. I, I just kind of feel like we're going to have to do this. We're going to have to do this ourselves for a long time. You know, once the chemistry catches on, then everyone's out to do it. Then you start licensing bits of technology. But you got to get it into the market, right? Like someone's got to take that plunge and go, we're going to sort it out. We're going to work out all the manufacturing issues. We're going to work out all this stuff. If you're going to do the chemistry, you got to do it. You got to sign up. There's been a lot of talk at this show that, okay, yeah, BEVs are the future, but hybrids and plug-in hybrids are red hot right now. What about putting them into those applications? It's okay. It's not, I mean, cost-wise is a great sell. A, a hybrid, it's not the best sell for a hybrid. Um, really, it's a great sell if you're trying to reduce the weight of a vehicle. And a hybrid's got that pack and it's got that electric motor. You're usually in a hybrid looking for a cell that gives you maximum cycle life, right? So people are doing LFP in that, right? I, you know, we could do sulfur. It'd be fine, but it'd be fine, okay? <laughs> if you're going to do a new chemistry, you're going to be where it's going to be great. And really, you know, this is a chemistry for the, um, where you're going to reduce the cost of the total vehicle and you're going to reduce the weight of the total vehicle. So this is cars for everyone. They're not complicated, right? These, these are going to be regular cars, all electric. It's going to be heavy vehicles, the big stuff, you know, the trucks, the last mile delivery vehicles, the heavy equipment where, you know, you're getting to the point where people are worried about road damage from the weight of the vehicles, right? You got to lighten up the battery pack. That's where it's going to go. I, I, I wasn't aware of that. So what kind of weight reduction can lithium sulfur bring? So our cells weigh about half of what a conventional Yikes. cell weighs, wow. right? Wow. Yeah, they, there's a scale out there. You can, we can show you some batteries. You can yeah. pick them up. But like, that's the whole point of lithium sulfur is you reduce the weight of your vehicle a lot, right? So if you're talking about cost and range and, you know, well, you can, for the same, you know, you can expand the range dramatically, right? Because your vehicle doesn't weigh that much. Or you can reduce the range, reduce the cost dramatically, right? So, like, this is really, this is the cell that makes everything electric, you know, electric, right? Yeah. How you electrify everything, it's with lithium sulfur. Because price is down, the energy density is up, the raw materials are available, they're not all geopolitically entangled, right? You're not, you're taking the geopolitics out of cell and energy, which is fantastic, right? Then it becomes, and it becomes a cell you can manufacture on any continent because the raw materials are everywhere. Cost, what do, what do you think that you can get to per kilowatt hour? Well, you know, I think the bomb cost is somewhere 40% cheaper than what you got in lithium ion. Now, the Chinese are, you know, subsidizing the hell out of everything. So, you know, that gets that gets kind of wild, but this, this becomes substantially cheaper. Not a little cheaper, a lot cheaper, right? Obviously, you gotta get it to scale, right? You got to scale all the supply chain before you start reaping those benefits. But the fundamentals are substantially cheaper, right? That's that's why this is that's why this is even con why we're even considering doing this because cell making is so hard. You know, you're competing with people who've been doing it for so long. Their margins are so tight. How do you compete with that? The only way you compete with that is if you differentiate yourself. Change the rules of the game. You got to. You got to be completely different in some way, shape, or form. Either your performance has got to be amazing, or you got to be a lot cheaper. We think our performance is going to be pretty amazing. There'll be some, you know, differences. Some things will be good. Some people are best. But performance is going to be strong. But the cost is going to be amazing, right? So that gives you margin. That lets you actually try to scale this. Actually have a successful chemistry in the United States. It could be really good. Selena, thanks so much for your time. Really yeah. good stuff. Appreciate it. Yeah. The automotive industry continues to evolve, and so do the opportunities to define it. Borg Warner, one of the world's most admired companies, gets its partners where they need to go. Let's do something big together.